hospitals. I have been associated with financial hospital for a period of two and a half years now. I have been working as a corporate manager for my corporate team and our responsibilities and roles includes uh, making connections with corporates, uh, creating awareness employees for uh, financial employees for uh, awareness. And also at the same point of time, uh, we uh, we at Financial Hospital, we have been into this business for almost like 12 odd years and we have successfully serviced each and every client, either it has been from India or abroad. So it and our verticals include financial planning, tax advice or investment planning, which uh, mainly deals in equity, debt or any alternate category. So we do have a team which is a very strong one and with very strong research and latest economic trends. So we are always ready to serve our customers or investors that we have on corporate level as well as on our retail level for any queries that they have. So with the rich experience of our professional teams, which comprises of CAs, our MBAs, our CFPs, our financial planners, our investment planners, and the kind of market knowledge that they possess, we are sure that we'll be able to touch all the lives of all the investors that we have online. And uh, the presenter of this webinar today would be uh, Mr. Sudanwa Dharmadikari. He's the financial uh, planner for financial hospital, working with financial hospital for almost a year. And uh, he's pretty institutional. And I'm sure that he'll be able to guide you all through uh, this presentation. At the same point of time, uh, with so in terms of the presentation flow, we'll have this presentation for approximately 30 to 35 minutes, post which we'll be able to answer all the queries that you may have regarding this webinar or the questions that you may have related to the uh, topics that we are being touching upon. So I will now go ahead and uh, hand over this uh, to uh, Mr. Sudanwa Dharmadikari, who will be taking over the details. Sudanwa, all yours now. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot, Manoj. Thanks for the kind introduction. So uh, I assume that I am audible now and I will start the sharing with the PPT, right? Yes, please go ahead. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Manoj. Uh, hello, everyone. So uh, thank you for attending this session on uh, budget 2020 and uh, the implications of the new and the old tax regime. Uh, we'll also discuss a little bit about the current market scenario which is going on and uh, what are the implications on our portfolio as well. So let us start uh, and uh, going ahead. Uh, if you see, uh, nothing in this country is free. So what we mean to say here is whatever the government is spending on the country's infrastructure, uh, the policies that the government comes up with wherein they help out the uh, poor and the farmers of the country, all these uh, uh, schemes that the government comes up with, uh, the major chunk of the money for the government comes from the taxpayer's money. So the taxpayer uh, who is an individual like you who is paying their taxes regularly and uh, very honestly. Uh, is helping the government out in a, uh, in a very good manner here uh, to not only uh, use this money for the uh, government schemes for farmers and infrastructure, but also, you know, in terms of developing this country and its economy and taking this country ahead. So uh, the government has always been very uh, pro proactive. This government has shown that it is proactive in coming up with good schemes in terms of uh, the farmers, in terms of the infrastructure, there is a lot of focus on the uh, country's infrastructure, growth of the country's infrastructure, and uh, which is uh, not uh, only the government's doing, it is thanks to you as well. So moving ahead, uh, what are the implications of the budget on income tax? So this, this budget had a lot of uh, changes seen in the income tax. Uh, there, were, uh, there were new tax regimes that were instituted in this budget. Uh, a lot of uh, changes that happened in the processes of the filing of income tax and the uh, how the income tax returns are governed. A lot of changes have happened over there. So a brief of the changes uh, that are uh, particularly uh, related to you as an individual taxpayer. These are a few of the points here uh, in the income tax. Uh, 
what is a tax charter so basically the government is trying to introduce a tax charter uh, this means that the government is trying to uh, build a trust with the income tax holder by uh, coming with the document of uh, that is known as the tax charter in which the rights of the individual taxpayers will be clearly mentioned so for any of the uh, what the government is trying to do here is trying to connect to the individual taxpayer by showing him what uh, rights he has an individual taxpayer uh, what kind of uh, process that happen uh, during the income tax filing how your uh, money is being utilized and everything which will all be presented under the this tax charter which the government is planning to introduce the second point over here is the faceless appeal uh, the faceless appeal is basically to reduce the uh, the what you can say is that the individuals uh, uh interaction with the uh, government income tax uh, official so in in the earlier days you might know that uh, if you get any notice from the income tax office and uh, you needed to go to the office sit in front of the uh, uh, income tax officer and then deal with the income tax officer to get your uh, uh, appeal uh, uh, or your demand reduced so this introduction of the faceless appeal is basically a uh, it will be a faceless scrutiny you will not be knowing who the uh, investigating officer is why the uh, who where he is where connecting from it will all online and, and uh, you will be able to deal with him uh, effectively in that case the, this is going to reduce the so this is there to reduce that as well as to make things the thing that they have come up with is an aadhar based uh, instant pan card issuance so if you have an aadhar card and you can you can directly apply for a pan card and you will get your pan card issued uh, there are no other uh, documents that will be required which is again a very good move for the individual taxpayer who who, who, have, who does not have a pan card uh, this is uh, the fourth point here is the vivad se vishwas scheme this is a very good scheme that the government has come up with for the people who have outstanding demands from the past uh, in the past few years so what the government is saying over here is that you will not be uh, faced with any penalty or the interest if you are paying the amount before june uh, 30 so th- this has changed from march 30 to june 30 uh, to give you some relief in uh, in the current covid scenario so a three month relaxation has been given to you so what the government is trying to do here is that if you have any outstanding demands or any uh, let's take an example like like if there is a uh, if there is a demand which has been risen against you uh, from the past four years if you uh, paid your uh, principal the uh, principal uh, the interest is being accumulated on your demand so what happens is that in under this scheme what you can do is you can clearly say that i am ready to pay the principal the government will not charge you any penalty there will be no interest that will be charged on you the government what what government is trying to do over here is that uh, it is encouraging the people to uh, to pay their uh, interest dues and uh, the income tax dues uh, so that more and more people participate in this and they are not afraid to pay the penalty or the interest that that can be a huge sum so you can get away with paying the principal uh, the 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 uh, the uh, advantage that the government is getting over here it, it is it is that it is converting most of the non payers or the uh, people who have not paid till now and encouraging them to pay the, their taxes on uh, you know uh, in this uh, period where they will be uh, charged no interest or penalty uh, the charity again is a point where the there will be a lot of transparency that the government wants uh, from the individual taxpayer so the donor to the donee the, the, the channel will be very transparent and there will be no uh, there will be no hiding of any such uh, uh, shady deals in that uh so moving on from here these are the uh, few uh, key points which the government had brought in uh, in the budget and uh, budget was that introduction of the new this new tax regime that the government has come up with so if you look at the table that is there on the screen right now you will see that there is a difference between the existing tax rate and the tax labs and, and uh, the in the old and thing what happened over here is that government has consolidated uh, had uh, some consolidated slabs uh, like up till uh, from 5 lakhs to 10 lakhs there was a single tax slab 
from 10 lakhs to uh, 10 lakhs and above there was a different tax lab uh, what the government is trying to do over here is they have broken these consolidated tax labs into a smaller tax lab and given them some benefits of in the tax rates if you look at it carefully over here you will find that between the uh, tax lab to 7.5 lakhs what is earlier you used to pay 20% tax rate which the government has now reduced to 10% so in each and every consecutive 2.5 lakh slab what the government has done is it has increased the tax rate by 5% which if you compare with uh, till the 15 lakh tax lab is a comparatively a significant saving on the tax rate uh, what this has done is that if the individual is not having any claim of deduction or exemption then you can opt for the new tax regime wherein you will be able to pay a, at a lesser rate and you will not be getting any tax exemptions or deductions so i'll get into the details of what the exemptions and deductions are under the old tax regime and what you will be getting under the new tax regime in the coming slides but the main point to notice over here is that if if you are not availing any benefit as of now then it is better for you to switch into the new tax regime wherein you will be able to pay at a lesser tax rate so a flat tax rate has been set by the government in these tax labs so from uh, 5.5 lakhs to 7.5 lakhs there is a 10% tax lab from 7.5 to 10 lakhs there is a 15 point uh, 15% tax lab from 10 to 12.5 there is a 20% tax lab and 12.5 to 15 lakhs there is a 25% tax lab above that the government is charging you 30% tax lab as it used to for uh, in the old tax regime uh, the other change that has happened in this uh, budget is that the dividends which were uh, tax uh, free in the hands of the recipient till now have now been uh, made taxable in the hands of the recipient so the companies will now not now not have to pay the dividend distribution tax that they earlier used to pay but the individual recipient of the dividend will have to pay the tax as per the tax uh, what this has done is it has avoided the double taxation which used to happen in the earlier regime <clears throat> wherein uh, the company used to pay their uh, taxes and from the uh, profit after tax that is the pat they used to pay a dividend distribution tax for distributing the dividend among the individual investors so what has happened is that they used to pay a double taxation wherein they used to pay their uh, all the taxes and on above and over over and above that they used to pay the dividend distribution tax which has now been abolished and it has now been made compulsory for the individual investor to pay the tax on the dividend uh, the third point over here is which is important over here is for uh, the perquisite tax which uh, to the salaried employees uh which is now uh, if you are if your company is paying your epf nps superannuation all these things together if it is more than 7.5 lakhs per year you will be able, uh, you will have to pay a perquisite tax on the uh, same amount which is over and above 7.5 lakhs so up till 7.5 lakhs if your epf nps and superannuation uh, contribution from the employer is uh, considered together is less than 7.5 lakhs there is no tax which you have to pay so whatever the contribution let's say the uh, company is contributing let's say annually in your epf uh, around uh, another 1 1.5 lakhs in your nps and uh, similar amount in your superannuation the amount it is amounting to somewhere around 6 6.5 lakhs then you don't have to pay any perquisite tax on that but if the amount exceeds 7.5 lakhs per year you will have to pay the perquisite tax uh, uh, this new tax regime that they have come up with who is it who is it applicable for and how uh, how can you take the advantage of this of the same uh, for an individual who is not having any business income that is uh, it, he is a salaried employee with uh, let's say he has no other business income which is uh, which he is earning that certain individual has the option to switch between the old tax regime and the new tax regime he wishes uh, in the uh, all the uh, financial years so for example uh, there is an individual xyz who is uh, uh, just a salaried employee and does not have any business income so for him if he wants to opt for the new tax regime for this financial year he can go into the new tax regime but in the next financial year he feels that uh, let's say he is buying a house in this financial year and he will be paying an interest uh, on that uh, house for the emis that is uh, he can take the 2 lakh benefit which is currently available in the old tax regime so he has the option to switch back to the old tax regime in the next financial year uh, if he has no business income that is there 
for this financial year. Uh, but for the individuals who are having business and profession income in their uh, income tax calculation, they will not be allowed to switch between the uh, exercises option more than once. So if any person who is having a business income or for the new tax regime, he has to continue for the new with the new tax regime for all the years uh, consecutive years coming together. He will not be able to switch between the old and the new regime. Uh, it's only a one-time option that he can exercise and not more than that. Uh, so, as I said, that I will be explaining what the uh, components under the uh, tax regime were there in the regime and what are the benefits in the new tax regime that you can avail. So, these are the uh, possible components which are there in your salary structure. Most of you must be aware of these components. Uh, if you look at your salary, uh, you can find these. These are the common components which are there for uh, most of the employees and you can relate with this. In the old tax regime, uh, the tax benefits which are available were on the uh, components of HRA, LTA uh, and the other expenses which are subject to actual expenses or the rent paid. So what happens over here is that if you are paying a rent and you are getting an HRA component in your salary, you can, uh, the, the, the rent paid, you can show the receipt to the income tax department and claim a deduction on that HRA. Similar with LTA, if you submit any travel uh, uh, tickets to the income tax department, you will be getting, and if you have an LTA component in your salary structure, you will be getting that as a tax benefit. Uh, similarly, in the if you compare it with the new tax regime, there is no such benefit available. Uh, so uh, the only benefit that is available in the new tax regime is the uh, contribution towards the NPS, which again we discussed is uh, under the capping of the 7.5 uh, lakh with for the perquisite benefits. Uh, the medical uh, insurance benefits that is uh, available under the section APU and uh, the retirement benefits. So these are the only benefits that you will be getting and uh, all the other uh, contributions or the uh, ATC uh, exemptions and deductions that were available in the old tax regime are not applicable in the new tax regime. Uh, this makes it very uh, interesting uh, read over here that you are, uh, if you look at the uh, possible tax benefits available in the old tax regime, you will find that there are a lot of benefits which you can take over here which are not available in the new tax regime. So why is the new tax regime uh, so attractive is because they have reduced the rates and they have removed all these uh, exemptions and deductions. So as I said, for an individual who is now, who is not uh, investing into any of the tax saving instruments, he is very, uh, he is benefited by going into the new tax regime and paying a lesser tax rate. Uh, I'll give you a few examples over here for you to understand clearly what I mean by saying that uh, the benefits that are available in the old versus the new. So uh, let's say, let's take an example of an individual who is under the habit of savings and uh, has a lot of uh, tax saving investments already made. So what the maximum benefit you can get under, this, under the section ATC is 1,50,000 which includes your LICs, ULIPs, ELSS and all the other tax uh, saving instruments. Uh, the component which is available over here is the HRA or the house loan interest. So what, what, what I mean by the house loan interest is you have taken a housing loan and you are paying an interest uh, in, interest component in your EMI. The interest component on, in your EMI, uh, you can take a benefit of around 2, 2 lakh rupees over there in an entire financial year. So if you are paying an interest component which is higher than 2 lakh rupees, you will be uh, subject to capping of 2 lakh rupees. You will only be able to take the benefit up to 2 lakh of rupees. If you are taking both the benefits over here and you fall under the uh, income tax uh, slab of 5 lakhs, you are not taxable in the old uh, tax regime as well as the new tax regime. So under the uh, le level of 5 lakh rupees slab, you are not taxable at all, in whether it be old or whether it be new. Uh, the, uh, tax, tax slab, under the old tax regime, if you were uh, say investing into eight, under ATC, 1 lakh 50,000 rupees, so similarly, the, this deduction uh, takes your income down from 6 lakhs to 4.5 lakhs which again means in the old tax regime, you are not taxable. But this investment uh, option is not available. The tax benefit is not available in the new tax regime. So in the new tax regime, you will be taxed at a rate of 5%, which comes to 23,400. So which means that you are paying an excess of tax of 23,400 under the new tax regime as compared to the older tax regime. Similarly, if you go on from there to 7.5 lakhs, to 10 lakhs, to 12.5 lakhs, you will find that there is an increasing amount of uh, 
tax that you are paying as and when your tax uh, your income slab is exceeding so uh, for a person as i said for a person who is taking the benefit of uh, the investment uh, tax saving investment options that are there in the old tax regime and the housing loan interest it is beneficial for that person to stay into the old tax regime rather than moving into the new tax regime uh, taking another example here you will see that he is taking the the, the same person is taking only the uh, investment of, uh, of 1.5 lakh which is there under the atc the exemption which is available under the section atc uh you will find here that again uh, it is uh, in the first uh, few slabs that is the 5 lakh and 6 lakh slab you are paying a uh, excess of tax in the new tax regime as compared to the older tax regime but as you move on from there if you compare it with the older slide wherein you were getting a benefit of 2 lakh rupees uh the, uh the 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 tax excess of tax that you are paying in the new tax regime is actually reducing and over and above the 1 lakh 25 12 lakh 50 thousand uh, slab you will find that you are paying less of tax as compared to the older tax regime because you are getting a benefit of around 5% over there in the tax rate wherein you had to pay around 30% tax in the older tax regime you now only have to pay 25% tax over here so you will find that you are saving a lot of uh, your uh, income tax uh, on the basis of the reduced tax rate by the government in the new tax regime uh same is the case with the uh, person who is not uh, actually in the habit of saving anything or is not having any uh, housing interest loan so you will find that that person is uh, very much suitable to get into the new tax regime staying in the old tax regime you will find that uh, right from the 6 lakh slab you will find that uh, you have to pay either a similar or a less of tax than what you used to pay in the old tax regime uh concluding this all entire confusing scenario over here what i would like to say is that just uh, study your uh, investment uh, investment options study your salary what components you are getting what benefits you are taking and if you are taking a lot of benefits in the uh, under the old tax regime where you are saving your uh, atc deductions where you are saving a lot of money in your housing loan interest then it is beneficial for you to stay in the old tax regime rather than moving into the new tax regime even though the new tax regime is providing you the option of reduced tax rates what what is happening in the old tax regime is that your exemptions and deductions compensating for that reduced tax rate so for a person who is not uh, who is not under the habit of saving and who does not uh, have any housing interest loan then uh, for that that kind of a person it is uh, safer to move into the new tax regime and pay the less tax rate uh this concludes my tax uh, scenario over here uh, now moving on to the market scenario uh what 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 has happened in the current market scenario what is the impact of covid 19 on the current market scenario uh you most most of you might be aware that the uh, equity markets in india are now on a downfall you have seen a major correction of around 30 35% in the equity markets over the past few months wherein there was a sharp fall from a level of 37 38000 which has now come down to around 30000 and is hovering close to uh, the 30000 mark uh, why this has happened is because uh, i'll give you a few pointers over here so global economic indicators have weakened uh, the bear run is there in the major global indices so if you will find uh, the uh, if you look at the indian equity market scenario you will find that these are the similar market scenarios which are happening even in the developed countries so if you compare it with the us market or the china market or the japan market or any developed market the uk you will find that all the global markets are uh, facing a major bear run and uh, there have been a lot of uh, economic uh, fallouts that have happened in the past year which is uh, again a very big deterrent to the equity market uh, the manufacturing sector is suffering a lot because of the disruption the what what major impact the covid 19 is having is that it has shut down all the global supply chain that was happening in and out of china as you know china was china is one of the biggest exporters of, of the manufacturing uh, uh, for the manufacturing sector in the world so as soon as the uh, covid 19 hit china and china came out with the impact of covid 19 uh, most of the global supply chain was disrupted uh, the major uh, changes that happened in the world economy uh, 
uh, was due to uh, the 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 Chinese exporters were not able to export their goods to the uh, other countries, and because of which the manufacturing sector suffered a lot. The the supply chain of the raw materials was disrupted. Uh, the the people the manufacturing units in India. If you talk about India, the manufacturing units in India suffered a lot due to this uh, COVID nineteen as well. There was a major lockdown which was announced by the government because of which the manufacturing units were shut down. And uh, you can see all these uh, impacts of uh, of this COVID nineteen on the Indian equity markets and the global economies as well. So if you look at the chart over here, you will find the revised growth forecast. So what we have mentioned over here is that uh, before the COVID-19 outbreak, India was uh, the, the India was touted to grow at a rate of six percent, which has now come down to two point one percent. And uh, if you look at the uh, current, uh, uh, in fact, today only the Indian uh, Industries Confederation came out with a growth forecast of around one point five percent for the Indian uh, market. So the Indian GDP is now uh, not growing as well as it was. Uh, if you compare it with the other uh, other uh, economies of the world, uh, you will find that most of the economies are now <clears throat> in a contraction uh, period, wherein their GDPs are not growing uh, as opposed to they are contracting more. So if you will find only the only India, China, and Indonesia are the countries where there is a positive uh, growth forecast. The rest, all the countries are suffering with a negative growth forecast. Their economies are shrinking down. They will not be able to grow at the pace which they were doing before the COVID-19. What the Indian government has done uh, to take uh, this COVID-19 measures is that, firstly, first and foremost, impact that we saw of the COVID-19 lockdown was that the Indian, uh, the worker class of the Indian uh, economy, that is the daily wage workers, were not able to sustain because of the shutdown in their uh, work. So uh, they were not able to get even the basic amenities such as food, and which is why what the government had done for them was to uh, get a you know uh, get in a a, 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 PF, a package of uh, five kg rice wheat plus one kg dal of choice free for three months. So which is over and above the uh, the benefits that were that they were getting earlier. So the government what what the government did first and foremost was to ensure that each and every individual in India. Is able to sustain uh, its uh, their food uh, requirements over this COVID-19 lockdown period. So for the three-month period, the government is giving them free, uh, free of cost, the five kg rice and wheat and one kg of dal. The second uh, most impacted uh, people were the doctors, the nurses, and the sanitation workers. So these are the people who are continuously working with the uh, the infected people and helping India to you know sustain through this COVID-19. So for them, what what the government came up with was that 50 lakh medical insurance was provided to each and every doctor, nurse, and sanitation worker. Uh, so in case of any medical emergency due to COVID-19, which happens to these uh, people, uh, will now be taken care by the government by providing the 50 lakh medical insurance. Uh, the third uh, most hit uh, Indian, uh, what you can say, the Indian uh, part of the Indian diaspora were the farmers. So the farmers were hit because they were not able to. Uh, the, the, again, their supply chain was disrupted. They are not able to. Uh, in fact, they are not even able to harvest their uh, their fields properly, uh, which is why they are facing a lot of uh, issues in their daily uh, requirement fulfillment. Which is why the government uh, came up with a rupees two thousand as a front load in their account to sustain them through this period. Uh, this was what the government had done for the Indian uh, diaspora. Uh, what the RBI did for uh, infusing liquidity into the market was, uh, since there, since uh, due to lockdown, what had happened that the liquidity in the market really uh, shrank down, and uh, people were facing a lot of liquidity issues. What uh, the RBI announced was that they will be infusing uh, around 1.1 lakh, uh, lakh crore uh, rupees into the Indian market uh, via open market operations. So this was announced on 27 March 2020. And uh, this was done to majorly uh, keep the uh, money rolling in the Indian market, and uh, so that the uh, problem is eased out. Uh, the second part that they came up with the payment moratorium period uh, was offered by the banks. Uh, so RBI gave a option to the banks to offer this payment moratorium period 
in case of all the term loan uh, what this did for the consumer was that it provided them uh, an opportunity to ensure liquidity in their cash flow uh, which means that for the period of 3 months they will not be uh, paying their emi dues and their emi tenure will be increased by 3 months post uh, this covid 19 so what 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 uh, good thing it did for the consumer was they were able to save their cash which was uh, which you uh, but they are going to the emis and the uh, banks now are offering them moratorium period so they can save that three month cash use it for as their emergency fund and then when their liquidity starts flowing in again their the, the companies resume uh, their normal business as usual uh, once the salary cycle starts again uh, properly you will find that uh, this will help you out uh, to pay your emis in the future so this this again this one good thing that happened for the banks in this was that uh, due to this uh, uh, this moratorium period what happened was the pressure of the nps that would have been created on the banks due to the uh, non payment of the emis has now uh, been removed from the this risk has now been uh, removed from the bank so the three month moratorium period where the nps would have gathered a lot uh, has helped the banks to keep their books clean and healthy and uh, continue with their operations uh this was all what the government did for the uh, indian diaspora the liquidity and the economy uh, now i'll talk, talk some something about the what what government came up with the tax measures uh, in the uh, against the covid 19 so the government relaxed most of the tax collection measures for the sme sector the sme sector was the one which was the uh, most hit sector in this uh, entire covid 19 situation where uh, the small and medium businesses didn't have enough liquidity didn't have enough cash to sustain them through this period uh, in uh, in as the march was coming uh, near and uh, the tax payer uh, tax collection dates were coming closer what the government did was they relaxed this tax this tax collection measures for the sme sector so that they are able to sustain first take care of their business and then think of the other uh, issues that of the tax collection that will come into picture for the individual tax saver uh, ta- individual investor again the same thing was done that the tax saving investment date was extended up to 30th june so what this ha- what happened due to this was whatever the uh, investment that you were doing uh, in the financial year the date has extended up to 30th june you have got a period till 30th june where you can do your tax saving investments and take the benefit in the previous year as well so it is an option which the government is giving you that if you have not made your tax saving investments up to march uh, th- uh, 31st march uh, the government is giving you another quarter to do those investments and take the uh, savings as a part of your previous financial year uh, this has also been uh, extended to the other uh, tax saving instruments such as capital gain bonds and uh, all the other uh, tax saving instruments which has been extended up to 30th june 2020 Uh, as i said if you are if you have done already done your tax saving investments up to 31st march the individual has uh, an option of starting the uh, new investments for the new financial year uh, so for the people who have already com- done their done with their commitment they can uh, also start investing into the market but they they can they have the option to take this uh, tax benefit in the next financial year as well this is an option which the government has kept for uh, the individuals to take care of Uh, you can either choose to whatever investments you do in the first quarter of the uh, 2020 uh, FY 2020 2021. You have an option of taking the tax benefit in the previous financial year, or you can you have the option of taking the tax advantage in the new financial year as well. Uh, so in such scenario, what can be done? So I have mentioned a few uh, virus outbreaks that had happened in the uh, in in our uh, world history. and how it had impacted the indian equity market the nifty 50 returns so if you look at the uh, or the average that uh, that during the outbreak what fall had happened you will find that there was uh, during uh, influenza there was a 15% uh, negative uh, return that was uh, there in the uh, nifty 50 market similarly in sars there was a negative 11% return uh, during zika there was a negative 13% return and during corona virus it is now it has uh, extended up to minus 30 35% uh, but if you look at the uh, scenario after just one year you will find that the nifty 50 had bounced back very uh, effectively 
and uh, post uh, one year you can find a healthy return in the nifty 50 so what what is happening in the indian market today is that the indian markets are near to the bottom right now uh, this this sharp fall has created a lot of opportunity into the market at cheaper prices and then get the benefit of uh, when once the market returns to its normal you will find that your portfolio has gained a lot uh, by investing at such a low level uh, looking at what india can how india can bounce back there are three scenarios uh, in which uh, the economy can bounce back first is the v uh, what does the v mean that uh, there will be a sharp very sharp recovery why it will happen is that within a few weeks the containment will happen vaccine will be ready and uh, we can prevent the next uh, second wave of uh, infections uh, which will provide the economy to bounce back very sharply so we will find uh, that the uh, the sharper the fall the more sharper the return that you will find in the market uh, the second uh, situ- uh, scenario is that the lockdown is ineffective and uh, it continues for 2 to 3 months uh, the vaccine is ready uh, but uh, in the second part the vaccine is ready and uh, the second wave is somehow prevented you will find a recovery but it will not be as sharp as what you find in the first scenario uh, the third scenario is the worst scenario wherein the lockdown is also ineffective and the vaccine uh, is not been developed which causes a second uh, wave of uh, infections uh, which means that there will be a prolonged period of the economy being uh, or the markets being at a low level and you will not find a recovery very soon so what india is now hoping for is that the uh, we we are most likely looking at the u shaped recovery wherein uh, once this uh, effective effectiveness of the lockdown can be measured uh, within 2 3 months and uh, if india can prevent the second wave of uh, the infections to happen we will find that the indian economy will slowly start rising again and we can take the benefits as i said uh, that we can take the benefits of the cheaper rates in investing at into the indian equity markets at a very cheaper rate uh, what uh, so now i'll move on to the asset class analysis you have understood that uh, this kind of uh, market provides a good scenario of investing into good opportunities for the investors to invest at a cheaper rate so where can you invest what what are the asset classes that are available for you to invest into so the major five asset classes are the equity the debt the gold real estate and insurance uh, if you look at all the uh, asset classes uh, some asset classes have a positive outlook some asset classes have a negative outlook uh i'll uh, dig deeper into why this situation is so if you look at the equity uh, we feel that the uh, outlook on this uh, asset class is very positive the index funds and the large cap funds are a best bet in today's scenario so if you want to invest into the uh, if you look at the pricing of the large cap uh, stocks and the uh, large cap funds you will find that the prices have fallen down very sharply and uh, it is a good opportunity to invest into this at a cheaper rate and uh, once the market starts recovering you will find that your uh, portfolio will give you a very good return once the market starts uh, uh, again your your market starts climbing up uh, in the debt for uh, debt part we are very neutral uh, what we feel is that uh, if you have any short term deposits for any short term goals that that might occur you can go in for fixed deposits or guaranteed return for long term which is very advisable uh, but uh, the scenario is such that the debt and the liquid means can also go negative for the short term so if you look at the debt part uh, uh, the the falling government rates have given us the option uh, that we can fix a guaranteed return rate for the long term and get into the debt so if you really get into the debt portion Uh, we advise you that you get into the long term guaranteed return uh, part uh, gold uh, again is a very uh, is an asset class which we have a very positive outlook on uh, this you can invest in up to 10 to 20% of your uh, wealth portfolio into gold this can provide a good hedging opportunity for you uh, which can hedge against the equity and the debt in your portfolio uh, for this what the rbi Doing is they have come up with a new uh, sovereign gold bonds uh, which they have started issuing from April 20. So rather than getting into the physical gold, you can go in for those uh, these kind of sovereign gold bond investments, wherein you will reduce the risk of the storage and the uh, physical gold uh, saving risk. So you can save on that, and you can get into the sovereign gold bonds. 
so this can be a very good uh, hedging opportunity for you you can park uh, a, a small portion of your into gold uh, the fourth asset class is the real estate uh, we have a very negative outlook on the real estate not just because uh, of this covid 19 but if you look at the scenario of real estate uh, uh, earlier to the covid 19 you would find that the real estate was really not doing very good the demand had slumped a lot there were was a supply which was there in the market which was in excess of the demands uh, which was bringing down the prices so uh, most of the people who had uh, uh, gotten into the real estate properties uh, in let's say 2016 or 2017 were not seeing that kind of appreciation and uh, some projects were even uh, showing a negative return so uh, taking into consideration the current scenario obviously once this scenario settles down uh, people's first thought will not be to invest into any of the real estate uh, will not be to uh, park such a major uh, chunk of money into real estate right now so they we see a big demand in the coming uh, one or two years so uh, the the good thing uh, with real estate is that you can wait for a period of another year year and a half and then uh, uh, start getting into real estate slowly uh, then the fifth uh, asset class is the insurance asset class the insurance asset class uh, is now becoming very important people are now uh, starting to understand uh, the importance of the health plans the critical illness plans the medical insurance and the term insurance and uh, uh, i feel that uh, if you have not uh, have not if you are not having any of uh, these kind of insurances it's better that you take your insurance as early as you can uh, for avoiding uh, in a, any future scenario where such kind of uh, uh, things happen uh, you will be at least uh, save, saving yourself from uh, a lot of uh, medical costs so insurance is one uh, sector which which you need to get into so uh, the all considering the entire scenario what we feel is that diversification is very necessary it's uh, it's never a good option to a single asset put entire uh, your of your portfolio into a single asset class diversify your asset class hedge your asset class with different uh, hedge, uh, hedge your different uh, asset class with different instruments and then uh, you will find that your portfolio is fairly safe in any kind of scenario uh moving on to the sector analysis uh, this is basically uh, if you look at uh, the uh, different sectors that are available in the indian equity market you will find that the most positive uh, sectors right now are the pharma and the healthcare sector so the pharma and the healthcare sector have got a very good opportunity uh, today in today's scenario wherein uh, they are developing their drugs and there will be a lot of demand all over the world for uh, this kind of uh, drugs and vaccines and uh, india is the you know uh, the biggest export synthetic drugs which which helps out india's pharmaceutical industry a lot which means that they have a larger share of the generic drugs in the entire world and they already have their uh, supply chain into place so once uh, the companies which are now currently working on the vaccines and the uh, measures to prevent uh, any such health pandemic in future uh, you will find that the pharma and the healthcare industry has the most positive outlook right now the second uh, sector which was not uh, that affected by this uh, covid pandemic was the was the fmcg sector wherein the all the goods under the fmcg sector were classified as essential services and were allowed uh, to continue to make their sales so the fmcg sector was the second uh, sex such sector which was not uh, really hit due to this uh, uh, covid 19 pandemic uh, the third sector which was able to sustain this pandemic was the information and technology or the it sector so the if you look at the it sector most of their uh, their work was already been you know a lot of people in the it were already working from home before this covid 19 impact uh, really came into picture so post this also we feel that the information technology it sector has uh, the infrastructure which can sustain through this uh, uh, covid 19 pandemic also this sector is a very cash rich sector so there is not uh, much of a capital uh, deployment requirement in this sector which uh, makes this sector very cash rich and uh, in today's scenario as everyone knows that cash is the king so this sector we have a very positive outlook on and it can sustain through this covid 19 and give you a good uh, give your portfolio a good return 
So having exposure into uh, these three sectors will help your portfolio recover faster. And uh, you, you can really think about getting into all these sectors at this point of time, which will help your portfolio recover very fast. Uh, the negative on the negative side, you will find that uh, the real estate sector is really uh, one of the users in this uh, entire scenario, as I had already explained. The air and travel where was the another negatively hit due to COVID-19. So due to lockdown, what had happened that people were not allowed to travel. So people have suspended their leisure travels and all the uh, vacations that they were supposed to take in this year. And mostly the scenario is likely to continue over the next six months to one year. So we find that the air and travel uh, sector is not that uh, good. Uh, similarly, with uh, automotive, the consumer durable, the mining and metal, oil and gas, all these sectors have a negative outlook depending on what the demand uh, will be in the coming future. Uh, banking and insurance is one sector where we have a very neutral view. Uh, I feel that the banking and insurance sector, if it can uh, navigate through their NPA problem, uh, they will be able to sustain through this COVID-19 and uh, then again you, uh, you will find that the, uh, the sector will. Uh, start flourishing once this uh, pandemic is over. So the last thing what I I wanted to tell you was the six steps of uh, for money and finance. What you can do. Uh, these are very simple steps which you need to do with your money and finance, which will help you out in this uh, pandemic situation. The first is creation of emergency fund. So the emergency fund is not only meant for medical uh, emergencies or the medical costs that you may incur uh, in, in any, any kind of situation. This also means that uh, in the current scenario, you're looking that uh, around 24% of the Indian workforce is uh, not uh, really sure of their uh, salary uh, payments. And uh, you find that a lot of people are uh, now, have, now facing the brunt of the salary cuts which is why it is important for you to maintain a three month, uh, at least a three month expense, uh, mandatory expense uh, in your bank. So, three ka jitna bhi kharcha hai, utna at least aapke bank mein hona chahiye, both the husband and the wife is working. Uh, if only one of them is working, uh, you should at least have around six months of uh, liquidity in your bank account. So, creation of that emergency fund is very important. Uh, in any such scenario wherein you will find that uh, the pandemics, the health pandemic breakouts or uh, where the markets are not performing that well, the economy is not doing that well, the emergency fund helps you out to, you know, sustain through this period and then you can uh, again go get, get into the normal business as usual cycle. Uh, the second part is the cash outflow. So you, uh, in this, in such a scenario, you need to understand that uh, getting into the uh, the difference between the luxury and the need is one which needs to be clearly defined at these, this period of time. Uh, you need to understand which of your goals are uh, necessary at this point of time. Uh, prioritize those goals which are the most necessary and you cannot be, uh, you cannot avoid those goals. Those are the mo most, uh, those are the goals in which you need to, you know, prioritize your cash outflow to and curtail on your luxury needs. So all the goals which are, uh, which uh, are somewhere in that luxury uh, scenario where you are buying a new car or you are going for a vacation. All those scenarios you need to uh, start uh, curtailing on those uh, kind of expenses and prioritizing your needs to the goals which are necessary or absolutely important. Uh, the third part is the systematic investment plan. So you, most of the people today they know that uh, the Indian markets have sustained in this period of economic downturn only due to the inflow of the DII money into the market. So the domestic investors have been investing into the Indian equity markets despite of the global uh, weakening of the uh, economic indicators. You will find that the Indian markets have sustained for so long is due to the SIPs that are continuing from the domestic investors, the retail investors like you and me. So this is a good time to continue with your SIPs or increase your uh, participation into the equity. But if in such a situation where you have some liquidity issues or you are facing some problems with your cash flow, you can uh, take a pause uh, in your SIP for two to three months. Don't stop them completely. Just take a pause for two to three months. Don't uh, uh, don't uh, don't come out of the market so early, and uh, don't let your uh, you know uh, your your wealth plans get into uh, some kind of
what they said hold on for uh, for a period of 2 3 months and you will find that the situation will improve and you can again start getting into uh, start your sits uh the fourth most important point over here is that uh, your uh, financial plan or portfolio review so whatever portfolio you are holding today it's very important to uh, understand what kind of asset classes are you going to what your portfolio is really looking like so sit with your financial planner review your portfolio uh understand uh, where your uh, assets are at a risk understand which kind of asset class is safe at this point of time uh, try and uh, move your portfolio from that risky asset class to the uh, safer asset class at this point of time it's a very good time to rebalance your portfolio uh, review your portfolio is the most portfolio is the most important thing right now because a lot of safe assets or the assets which were giving you good returns have now turned risky so this is a good time to review your portfolio just rebalance it a little understand which kind of assets are risky in your portfolio and then to the safer asset classes uh, the fifth most important point here is that don't get into short term equity trades uh, don't get into any kind of future and options derivatives uh, that kind of investments right now uh, be a little uh, guarded when you when it comes to such kind of equity trades it's important that you understand that greed is not going to help you for a period of time nobody really knows what is going to happen tomorrow in the markets what is going to happen with the global economies what is going to happen with any kind of company it is really hard to predict at such a period of time where the markets are not following any fundamental uh, uh, practices that have been there in the equity markets uh, so really what is happening is that the indian equity markets are trading on uh, purely investor emotions so don't get into that trap uh, don't get into short term equity trades uh, whatever uh, whatever investments that you are doing do it with a perspective of a long term uh, financial planning and understand that your money is not going to uh, there is uh, it's not going to you know really be uh, effective if you double your money at this point of time there is a very high risk which is involved in that and uh, if you do understand all the risks uh, then uh, only you can uh, you know try and think of going for uh, trading option otherwise just stick to your investment options go in for long term investments which are really safe at this point of time and uh, which will help your portfolio sustain through this period the sixth most important point over here is that uh, there is no need to panic in such a scenario so realize making your notional losses into uh, you know real losses that is uh, just removing your money out from all the instruments at a loss is really not a good thing to do right now uh, that this uh, whatever the downfall that you are looking into the equity markets is there for a short period of time it will be you know uh, really uh, not helpful for your portfolio if you start uh, panicking and removing your money at a loss uh, let this situation pass let uh, let everything settle down and you will find that the indian markets will bounce back so i am that's all with my presentation right now and uh, i would like to you know now we can get into the question and answer section i understand that this uh, finance is such a, a situation that most people don't uh, like to share it on a public platform so we have a minty app which is there which is a, a wealth and tax advisory app which is ai driven it's the only uh, app in the in india right now which is ai driven and you can post your queries there uh, our uh, financial planners are available to help you out at all points of time in this uh, on this app you can always go to this app and post all your queries there you will find uh, an uh, instant uh, solution to your problems uh, all your queries will be resolved over there uh, also this app uh, does have uh, all the uh, webinars that 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 we have been giving over this period of time so you can just go into the app and check uh, on these webinars as well you will find that there are a lot of uh, webinars uh, which which will help you out in such period of time uh, that's it i i thank you all for your time and uh, i i am now open to any kind of questions that uh, that might come up and uh, manoj if you can take over and we can start with the question answer section uh, i think that is good thank you sudanma thank you for your insights uh, i would now be taking down questions uh, i have a question from uh, mr ayush saxena 
he wants to know what does he need to do to select new tax regime uh so for uh, for ayush as i said that the most important uh, point uh, point in choosing the new and new tax regime is that if uh, you need to understand what kind of investments you have been doing till now whether you are really taking advantage of the uh, exemptions and deductions that were available in the old tax regime if so if those exemptions and deductions are bringing down your uh, taxable income to such a level where you are uh, you are getting an advantage over the reduced tax rates it is uh, good for you to stay into the old tax regime otherwise you need to move into the new tax regime where you will be paying lesser amount of tax in terms of tax rates okay i hope uh, that answers your question mr ayush uh, another question from uh, mr ayush once again uh, why don't you think that the consumer durables will boom during this time you know as soon as the markets open up i think refrigerators acs and washing machine probably dishwashers will be in more demand i guess so do you have a solution yeah so if you look at it from point of view of the uh, the salaried individual you will find that lot of really uncertain at this period of time whether their salaries will continue what kind of job scenarios are out there uh, what impact will the salary cuts have on their long term uh, cash flows considering everything i don't feel that people will be the first choice in that uh, in people's mind would be to go and uh, buy new things which are a uh, heavy cost on their cash flow which which create a heavy pressure on their cash flow uh, rather people will uh, save their money they they will be scared to get into uh, the uh, spending cycle just as of now it will take some time for people to overcome their fear and uh, once this uh, period uh, goes by you will find that slowly people will again start picking up their consumption uh, habits and then only will find a good demand in such a sector so for the short period of time for around 3 to 4 months it's really not uh, uh, very attractive uh, in in the shorter period of time but as the time goes on as things settle down more as people start their consume, uh, consumption cycle once again you will find that slowly the demand will rise in the consumption durables wherein a long term perspective is uh, it's, it's a positive uh, on that side okay uh, for a risk averse person what would you suggest would you suggest at this point of time to start an sip or would you ask him to you know jump into equity markets because the markets are volatile but a person is a risk averse person so for uh, first you need to understand that uh, getting into the equity markets directly is uh, is a risk yet at, at in any period of time whether it be a, a good economic cycle whether it be a, a, a swing market cycle it's risky to get into the direct equity at any point of time so in such a scenario where the uh, the shares uh, have fallen down the prices of the companies have come down to a very low level you will find that uh, even getting into the mutual funds is beneficial because their nevs have also dropped uh, uh, in response to whatever the whatever is happening in the equity market so at this point of time getting into sip is always advisable uh, start your sips slowly get into the market there is an opportunity in the market which is there to remain for the next 6 months at least so you will find that your sips will get, get a lot of momentum in this 6 months and you will start getting good returns once this once this volatility is over okay mr colin has another question assuming that india has a u shape recovery so from our research what would be the approximate period of flattening before the scale up happens so as i mentioned in the previous question uh, i feel that around uh, this volatility is there to stay for around another 6 months to 100 uh post that only you will find that the entire economy will start uh, slowly reviving it's very difficult for the economy to revive in the short term uh, considering all the uh, disruptions that have happened in the major sectors manufacturing is the one sector which has been the uh, which has hit uh, the worst where uh, you will find that uh, the, the companies that have uh, been impacted a lot due to the shutdown uh, they will find it very difficult to resume their operations so for another 6 to 6 uh, months to 8 months you will find that the economy is in that volatility period itself where the markets will remain volatile and once the uh, economy starts settling down uh, 
let's say from a period of one over a year you will find that the economy will start reviving so in my opinion i feel that uh, the next 6 months are going to be very volatile and to suppose that you will find a good recovery in the market yeah i have one more question uh, mr gopal rathod has asked is asking this question uh, mr gopal has a home loan he is staying in a different city and also taking advantage of the rent as well he has lic and medi claim so he is getting rent income also which so, so he is also getting rent income so which tax regime is better for him well as you suggested that you are not staying uh, in the home which for which you have taken a home loan so which means that you are you have rented out that home so uh, in the new tax regime as well you will be getting the benefit of the just uh, 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 the EMI interest component that you are paying, you will be getting a two lakh exemption over in the new tax regime as well. So uh, my advice would you to would would be to just calculate uh, whether uh, that uh, the tax saving instrument under the section ATC which you mentioned the LICs and all are really sufficient for you to uh, the the to counter the lower tax in the new tax regime. i feel that if you calculate you will find that uh, in the newer tax regime since you are getting the benefit of the 2 lakh rupees in their in your interest income interest uh, expense that you are paying in your emis that will be also beneficial and you will also have the benefit of the uh, lower tax rates uh, so uh, in my opinion i feel that you need to do that calculation first understand uh, what uh, the differences are and then you can go for opting whether you want to go in for the new tax regime or the older prima facie it, it seems that uh, the tax regime will be beneficial for you uh, in 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 any case so just uh, do your calculation first and then understand where you are saving more thank you uh, again same uh, another question from mr gopal he is investing into mid cap growth funds and large caps so at this point of time does he need to change anything or just should he just continue with the current uh, you know scenario irrespective of the fact that it is showing as negative growth at the moment uh, so mr gopal you need to understand one thing over here that uh, the mid caps that you are investing into so you need to understand what kind of uh, mid cap companies are you really uh, investing in through your mutual funds so if if the company is if if they are they are quality mid caps and they are likely to sustain this uh, extended period of lockdown and then their cash flow sustains them through this period mid caps can also be a good option to have in your portfolio uh, make sure that the uh, port- your portfolio has more exposure towards the large cap uh, segments and uh, you keep only that portion of your uh, portfolio into mid caps which you feel you you can uh, be on basis of your risk appetite you can uh, let it go so keep a small portion uh, only into the mid caps i would advise you to uh, uh, get into the large caps more and uh, this is a good time that you're reviewing your portfolio so uh, just go through your portfolio once uh, find out which kind of companies are there uh, we are there to you can always uh, shoot your portfolio towards us i am my email id is there on the screen right now so you can uh, share your portfolio with us if possible if you want any advice on that and we'll be able to help you out in reviewing that and uh, if there are good quality mid caps in your portfolio there is no harm in uh, continuing with them but make sure that majority of the portion of your portfolio is allocated towards large cap okay a uh, related uh, question at this point of time should i invest into small cap funds or should i stick to large cap funds so uh, small cap funds are a bit more risky than what the mid cap funds are there is every likelihood that uh, in such a scenario where the lockdown is uh, likely to extend uh, we feel that the small cap companies are more at a risk of, uh, Uh, their cash flows getting affected the worse uh, moreover uh, the they, they might be having a large on them as of now uh, since they are small cap and uh, these type of companies do tend to have larger debt portion in their uh, uh, portfolio so it's it's very risky to get into the small cap uh, stri- small cap companies right now uh, 
my advice would be to stick to large caps for the uh, for the current period uh, let this volatility settle down let the uh, market churn out the bad uh, small cap stocks out of the uh, out of the race and then you can start investing into the quality small caps that remain of course this volatility session so right now my advice is to stick to the large caps and uh, keep monitoring the small caps and as and when the uh, markets do settle down then it is it would be a right time to get into small caps one one more question uh, we have in case if we select uh, the old tax regime this year okay and probably next year a person salary increases so is there a possibility to switch back to the new scheme or should i continue with the old scheme only for the next year uh so as i had uh, said in my session uh, in in the previous slides that uh, if you are not having any business income in your uh, income sheet then it then you have the option of switching uh, from the old to the new tax regime and vice versa n number of times so you will you will not be restricted in switching back to the old tax regime if you are shifting to new tax regime only under one condition that your income should not show any business income in that so if you do not have any business income you are a salaried individual and earning only your salary and rental income it is uh, you have the option of switching between the uh, regimes as and when you like as and when the financial years change so you do have that option if you are not having any business income for the people who are having business income it is only a one option which can be exercised so if you are having business income and you switch to new tax regime then you will have to stick with the new tax regime thank you sudanwa for answering all the questions that we have these uh, were all the questions that we had uh, for today in case if you have any questions related to uh, taxes uh, we do have our minty application which you can download if you wish to know what are the best mutual funds where you can invest in where you can start as an investor do visit our fintu app which is f i n t w o fintu app which will give you uh the list of best mutual funds that you can invest into it's a mutual fund uh, trading platform uh, you can buy mutual funds you can sell your mutual funds as well so in case if you have any questions do download the minty app and we also have a customer care number which is 9699800600 uh, we are there to assist you from monday through saturday 9 am to 6 pm i'll repeat the number once again that's 9699800600 do get in touch with us we'll be more than happy to assist you and once again i would like to thank all the attendees who have attended the webinar i hope this was insightful and solves the purpose thank you once again and we wish you all the best have a good day thank you so much